What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing some tech review of a couple different pieces of equipment. And we'll get to what those are in a bit. But you might have noticed, different angle again in true white fashion. You know, instead of being up there, the camera is now at level with me. And we're at the project desk. This is where I do all my tinkering and anything else. And where I'm going to be doing future reviews until I can get a camera placement right above me where you can see exactly what's going on on the desk. But still figuring out how to make one of those because I don't want to buy anything. I like making stuff. So let's get on to what we're here for. What am I going to be reviewing? What pieces of tech are we talking about? Well, pieces of tech we're going to be talking about are cameras. Specifically, instant photo cameras or instant film cameras or Polaroids. These things are quirky little cameras that you think a lot of hipsters use. And if you think that, you're correct because a lot of hipsters do use these. But for good reason, because these little cameras are fun. These things are sick. And to show you how often I use these cameras, this is a stack of film of photos I've taken. There's That's not even all of it. I still have this much left. All these photos. And I'm gonna tell you today why professionals still use these. I'm gonna tell you why professionals still use these and how you can get better photos as well. I'm also gonna go over the basics of them and overall, I think it'll be a grand old time. So let's get right into it. So you might, we'll start, we'll start with this. This is the basic camera. I would recommend getting this first. This is the Polaroid Now. It starts off at I think 99 bucks. Pretty good for an introductory to cameras. And I understand not a lot of people have 99 bucks lying around, but if I, my best advice is get a used one. Used things are always just as good. And if you're not sure if you're really wanting to get into it, if you get something used, you didn't pay full price for it. So you didn't lose a lot and then you can just resell it. But let's go over how these things work. First, you have a button on the side here, small black button right here. You press that and pull this down. This is going to open up the door. And this is where you insert your film right here. I don't have any film to demonstrate, but I will here in a bit because I have another camera that's the same loading mechanism. But you insert it here. And you also notice there's these two rollers right here. You can only see one of them, but there are two. There's another one right under it. These are what roll the film out. And as they do that, inside each packet of film, there's chemicals inside and they're right inside this portion of film here this big white spot here on the back you can see the lines of where those chemicals are and so how it works is when you press the big red button the image goes through the lens hits a mirror in the back that's why it's this triangle shape because there's a mirror here it hits this mirror and it projects onto the film which is sitting on the bottom here that image is then spit out through those rollers and those rollers will squish the packs with chemicals in them, put it onto the film, and then you get your photo. Now, taking photos can be challenging at times. So here's some tips and tricks that I've figured out myself. I've taken a lot of bad photos and it's all just a learning curve. And yes, film is a tad expensive. A normal pack of iType film will run you about 15 bucks. And I understand not everybody has the means to do that right now. But just know if you do get into taking Polaroids, it's an awesome hobby. It's great and you can go at your own pace. But here are some tips and tricks. Nighttime, a lot of people will want to take photos at nighttime. That's great, but you gotta know the limits. You see this camera only has a little bit of flash right here that's not a lot it doesn't do a lot so you can take photos at night like this one right here it was very well lit up when we took this photo of me and my friends um and you can barely see any of it we tried taking a photo of our cars and while we could see them perfectly the camera just couldn't keep up it was too dark so the exposure just wasn't there and you can kind of see it but still i mean the results just weren't great and so that's pretty much taking photos at night. It's not an easy thing to do, but if you're trying to get a close-up shot of someone, 
it's doable. You can do it then, but just remember the flash is super bright. So it will hurt your eyes uh, if you keep doing it. But hey, it's the price you pay for awesome photos. So that's pretty much this thing. Um, there is a flash override button if you're taking photos in the day and it's right next to the power one. It's got a little lightning bolt on it. And when the flash is on, there's gonna be an orange light there. That means the flash is on. If you press it and it turns off, the flash is now off, but it will turn back on for the next photo. I think there's a way you can override it, but I don't like that. I always like to have the flash on for the next one, just in case I then walk into a darker area and I need it then, but you do you. Also, underneath the power button, there's a little window right here. This is gonna display how many shots you have left in your film pack. Polaroid Eye Type comes with about eight shots per pack, eight photos. So, you gotta know how many you have left. Well, when you insert the pack, it's going to shoot out a black little card. This card is protecting the film from sunlight exposure because that's how these photos develop is in sunlight. So that protects it. And when you put the film in, it's going to spit it out and you just pull it out. And then you will have eight shots left. And what you do with those is up to you. How to take photos is simple. Find what you want to take a photo of, put your eye up to the viewfinder this hole right here. I use my left eye, uh, so that way I can kind of get a basic of what all you're gonna see. Little tip for the now, I'm not sure uh, on other cameras, but for the Polaroid now, think a little bit outside the box. That's also gonna be there. I've had photo bombs on accident when I thought that nothing else was gonna be there. It's true. Just know it can happen. And sometimes it'll ruin shots like shadows. I'll take photos of cars and get low to the ground and shadows just ultimately kill those photos. So you put your eye up to the viewfinder, find what you wanna take a photo of, and then you press this red button right here, and that is going to take your photo. You'll press it down and you'll hear a clicking noise, then you let go, and it's going to spit the photo out. Now, there's gonna be a black thing over it, and what you do with that is nothing. Do not tear that. That's gonna be protecting your now taken photo, because again, these are very, reactant to light so pull that out hide it from sunlight best thing i can say to do put it in your hoodie pocket or in your pocket i wouldn't put it in your pocket if you're wearing jeans or shorts because then it'll get a nice curve to it and then it ruins the photo kind of it won't make it nice and straight little tip i found out the hard way with an awesome photo i took like i said learning curve but another thing temperature anything above 80 you're gonna get an orange filter to it Anything below 60, you're gonna get a greenish bluish tint to it. But you can get around this, literally hug your camera. It'll keep it warm. And if it's too hot, well, kind of just bone, you're gonna have to deal with it. So that's a quick rundown of the Polaroid now. Also a quick rundown of Polaroid camera and why I think they're cool. But they don't just sell cameras like this. Polaroid sells couple other things and here's another interesting thing that I think they sell this little thing is called the Polaroid lab and what this does is this is literally a Polaroid printer it is the coolest thing I've bought and I definitely think you should get one if you can sometime what it does is take this off through it little rubber thing take it off set it aside you don't need that then you got to turn it on there's a black button here on the right of it. You just press that and the top will lift up. There will also be LED lights lighting up this little rainbow thing here. You'll also see by the red button, there's some dots here. That is the counter for how many things of film you have left. This currently has zero because I just used all eight things of film because I was excited playing with this thing. And so when you're removing a film pack, there's a little strip on it that you just pull it straight out of. And then you close this back up. This is an empty film pack. This is what it looks like. And this little rainbow thing is what takes it out. Now, it was a lot easier to take out of the Polaroid lab than it is the Now camera. Now camera, you'll hear a noise similar to this. This is what it sounds like. Loading it. It just tried to <laughs> eject a pack. Uh, blank sheet, but there is none, so didn't really work. Now it thinks it has eight shots, I bet. So then you take this out, 
you have to pull a little bit harder, but it still comes out quite easily. Then you close it, and then you're done. Yeah, all right. Still says zero. That's what it looks like when it's on, by the way. You can see that lightning bolt and the zero because there's zero shots in this. So, Polaroid Lab. You can take photos with it, or you can print photos with it. How, though? Well, you take your phone and you set it on top of this with the Polaroid app. There's a lot more instructions to that, uh, to it than that, but basic run out. You set your phone on top of it, it's going to scan your phone and print the photo. And that's how you can go back in time and get a photo of the Ford GT40 at Le Mans. Or you can travel back in time and get a photo of a Toyota Land Cruiser. Love taking photos of cars. But that's some of the cool things you can do. Or if have you ever taken a selfie that was really cool? Well, you can print it out on this now. It's super cool. Troubleshooting. Um, you can adjust the exposure and saturation of images. And if you oversaturate it, your photos are going to be green. And if you overexpose it, or expose it, I'm having the trouble talking today. If you overexpose it, I'm not sure. I haven't messed that up yet. I literally just got this thing yesterday. I'm still playing around with it. So that being said, let's move on to a little bit of fun trilogy because we've talked about the new, but where did Polaroid come from? How was it invented? Who invented it and why? What was the purpose of making these cameras? Why not just use your phone? Well, we're about to get into that. In this history about these cameras, it's pretty cool. And lucky for us, I went and picked up today a piece of Polaroid history in this little box. But what is in this little box, you might be asking? What resides in it? The Polaroid 430, of course. So, how do you open it? Well, there's a little thing up here you push down and then you pull. And it's just plastic, so it comes right out. Then you open this up. You can remove this bottom part, and I always do. Push this little tab right here in the middle, and you just pull it out. You may need to wiggle a little bit, but it'll come out. And now you have a piece that looks like half a C4. And then you got the camera. But it doesn't work like this because I'll explain why. You see, in a Polaroid camera, here's how the photo works. Well, I already told you. Light goes through, or your image goes through, hits a mirror, goes onto the film. But you might be thinking, why? Can't fit a mirror in that. That's really thin. Well, watch this. Fit a mirror in that now. Oh, wait, they did. Because there is a mirror in this. And you can make the image longer by pushing this bad boy. And it extends the camera out further. Also, not getting enough exposure or don't have exposure at all because there isn't any on this. Well, they put this little attachment right here so you can take one of these bad boys, little aftermarket Polaroid attachment there, and you just slide it on, and there you go. You got an, at an adapter for exposure. Clip, plug it in, boom. Now you have the Chonkster Polaroid 3000. <laughs> oh yeah, where do you put the film in this thing? <laughs> in the camera's engine bay. Oh, look at that, that's so big. Lord, this thing is so huge and it's just so goofy because technically speaking, this enormous camera is the exact same as this. They're the exact same, same science and everything, same concept. And that's what's really good about Polaroid. But what's the history of it? Well, back in the day to make photos, what you had to do was you take the photo and that would take a long time, take probably half an hour, I'd guess. So people who were holding a certain pose, they would be real upset. And that's why no one was smiling in old photos. Then they'd have to take the film and take it to a photo laboratory. Not a laboratory, but like a shop because it was a simple process, but not everyone had the supplies to do it because you needed certain chemicals to do it. And of course it was business hours. So it took one to two weeks to get one image until one guy said, this is stupid, we're gonna fix it. And he developed a film pack system. How did it work? Well, like I said, there's a blank image on this sheet right here of this film. Inside, there's a chemical pack. The image hits the film through here, 
after hitting a mirror and it exposes onto the film. That film was then pushed out and this little packet of chemicals is squished and it shoots onto the film. And then this is put in a dark area where it can develop. Same process done in two weeks now can be done in 15 minutes. And that jump in time was crazy. This technology back then was incredible. People had seen nothing like this. This was revolutionary like technology and everyone loved it. That's why you can still get these vintage cameras for under a hundred bucks. You can get 80s, 90s Polaroid cameras for like 50 bucks. I bought this one, perfect working condition. Just need to find film for it. I paid $20 for it today. I know, crazy, right? But what happened to Polaroid? Why are they gone? Why does no one carry them around? Well, digital cameras. Digital cameras are just better, and that's kind of how it is. But I think the reason people do still like Polaroids is because we live in a day and age where everything is digital cameras. It's just a click of a button, and there you go. Not even a physical button. It's one you just touch with a touch screen. And I think people just genuinely enjoy having something that is pure mechanical but is also modern like this it's modern technology has proper equipment and electronics it's updated in the places it needs to be updated but yet it still is the original concept this is <laughs> it's so funny holding up to each other this is recreation done right they remade an old awesome piece of tech and they did it in a way that I think is perfect. I think they did a great job. Anyone from Polaroid watching this, which is unlikely, you did a stand-up job. And thank you guys for still making it available for us to buy film. You can still get this. You can still buy film. You can buy black and white film still. They make 600 type film, which is for vintage cameras from the 90s and 80s. Not sure about this guy. Um, I'm still trying to find film for him. Even if I don't, this is still going to look cool in my room. I'm still going to put this somewhere. Also, if you're watching this and you have one of these and you're like, how do I close it? This little bar right here. Here's what you do. Push that bar in. After you push this back, of course. Shrink it down a little bit. Push this bar in. And then you just push the boy in. There you go. You just did it. Also, it has a timer in the back for how long your film is being exposed for. Like, when you put your film away and let it develop, you set this timer. And it's just so cool, man. They really cared. And this aftermarket thing can switch it. It looks so cool. I love this thing. And it adjusts it, too, with this little lever. Oh, I can't do it when it's closed. Sorry about that, but... Anyways, this is super cool, and that's kind of the history of Polaroid. They were popular way back in the day, and then 70s came along. These things were popular. They were legendary. 80s came along, newly developed. They were more compact. Everyone loved them. 90s came around. Everyone was still loving them, but they were starting to turn into what the home phone is now. They were becoming a little outdated because digital cameras were slowly creeping into the market. People were starting to get a hold of them. And then digital cameras became available to everyone. And that's when you stopped seeing Polaroids. You still saw them, but not as often as you used to. Everyone had iPhones then, or digital cameras. And that was when instant film pretty much died. Until now, of course, because I hope they're making a comeback. That's why I'm making this. If I can convince at least a couple people to go out and buy one of these cameras, I've done my job. I'm happy with it. So go out, buy one of these cameras, do it. I wouldn't start off with the 430 though, because film is going to be a pain to find. And if you get a vintage camera, just know you're paying more for film because the vintage camera film packs are the batteries for them. So if you get a newer one that uses iType film, because these things run off of micro USB. They have like charging and batteries in them, which is better. Um, get one of these. I'd say get the new, uh, get the Polaroid now. They're the cheapest one. They're great introductory. Inter it, pff, crap, I can't talk today. They're great introductory. Uh, intr I give up. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really excited. But I would 100% go get one of these. Also, fun little fact about these things. 
you can find these vintage 431s. Even if you think they just look cool, you can find one. I found this one, 20 bucks. Came with an aftermarket thing, and it came with these two things. These are original Polaroid cold plates. What do they do? Well, if you're taking photos in a colder area, you don't want those photos to be cold. They're going to get messed up. Take these, and you literally put them in your pocket, and your body heat's going to warm them up. Then what do you do? You take your photo, put it on this one, close it, and then you put it in here. And since it has your body heat, you just put it there, or you just put it back in your pocket, because this is metal, so it won't bend, but it will keep your photo warm. Genius. It's just the simplest things are sometimes the best. And I think that's why people love these cameras. So go and get one today if you can. Go do it. These things are the best. But like I said, get a used one. Do not buy new. Don't be dumb and do that mistake. And as for the Polaroid Lab, do it. It's also a great introductory thing. It's great. I think it works well. And you can bring any photo to life. And they have a lot of different things you can do, like collages. It's honestly good. I think Polaroids are great, and I think you should go buy one. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video at all, please like and subscribe. Um, it'd be greatly appreciated. And share it with some people if you'd want. Uh, sorry, I haven't uploaded in a bit. I'm just short on ideas. I don't know what really to upload here. I said I was going to upload more, but I don't know what to record. But started getting into these bad boys. And now I'm making a video about them. So I'm going to upload another video about some of the photos I've done and go further into like how to make better photos or how to do it better. But for now, I think that's going to be it for this one. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Say cheese.